In this video, I'd like to demonstrate how to use Excel to find critical values corresponding to a certain sample size and level of significance. This will be particularly helpful in your hypothesis testing of the mean. So, let's just start with an easy one. Suppose we're performing a right-tailed test with a sample size of 6 and a level of significance of 5%. What's the critical value for this test. Now notice the notation I'm using here. T with an alpha as a subscript. Now when you read the textbook or when you read you know any material on this, a lot of times for critical values we'll see a T with an alpha divided by 2. The reason why I'm only using a single alpha and not the alpha divided by 2 is because for a right-tailed test there's only one tail. There's only one alternative tail and that will assume the entire level of significance. If we had a two-tailed test, then the level of significance would be shared equally between those two tails. That's when you see the T with the alpha divided by two. A lot of times people would just use that notation, alpha divided by two everywhere, because it represents the critical value. But I wanna make that distinction here. So, for this level of significance of 5%, the whole significance is in the right tail. So for this T distribution, for degrees freedom of five, which is always one less than the sample size for a hypothesis test of one parameter, our whole significance is 5%. And what we're interested in doing is finding that critical value that breaks up your T distribution into the top 5% and the bottom 95%. Now, we can use the table on our back of the book. But one of the things to remember is with this table A3, we're going to be limited to certain degrees freedom. Now in this case for degrees freedom 5 and a one tail because we're dealing with a right tail test, a one tail significance of 5%, it's easily found that the intersection of that row for degrees freedom 5 and level of significance of 5% is going to be 2.015 and it's there, that's one of the values here. Now, we could use Excel though. In Excel, the function that we can use is t.inverse. Actually, if you bring up Microsoft Excel and type that into the function line here, equals t, well right away you can see all the functions involving the t distribution. These first ones here are related to finding probabilities, but then these i and v are the inverse ones. That's where we're going to find, for a given probability or a given area, what is the critical value. So here's T inverse, and you can see the description here. This returns the left-tailed inverse of the student's T distribution, and a particular interest is left-tailed, meaning any probability that you plug into this has to be the cumulative area from the left of the critical value. So I'm going to select this. And now you'll see the arguments. I want the area or probability, and remember that's from the left and degrees freedom. So in this case, the cumulative area from the left or the probability from the left is not 5%, it's gonna be 95%. And the degrees freedom is still five. So if I plug that into my Excel document here, a cumulative area from the left of 95% and degrees freedom 5, it gives me a critical value of 2.015048. Notice you get some extra level of precision here, but essentially it is the same. So, and that's what we did here. Remember that 95 is the cumulative area from the left. So if we have a right tail test, we have to take the complement of the significance to get that cumulative area from the left. Now, suppose we're asked to perform a left-tailed test with a sample size of 50 and a level of significance of 5%. And we're asked to find the critical value. Now we're going to run into a little bit of problems. Because if you look at table A3, when we try to find degrees freedom corresponding to a sample size of 50, which would be 49, you'll notice that up until 40, we have all the degrees freedom. But then after 40, they start skipping around to 45, and then 50, then 60, 
And notice once you get to the hundreds, it goes from 100 to 200 to 300. So we're in a little bit of a pickle here because we want degrees freedom 49. They provide 45 and 50. Now, you might be tempted to use degrees freedom 50 just as an approximation of 49, but that's dangerous because you're overestimating the amount of freedom you truly have. You only have 49 degrees freedom. It's not particularly wise to overestimate your freedom and round up. In other words, don't use normal rounding rules. A conservative estimate, a play it safe estimate, would be using 45. However, by using these estimates of degrees freedom, our critical values aren't going to come out right. And in the homework for my stat lab, you'll find that they insist on exact values for these critical values. So what, you know, what are we supposed to do then? Well, in this case, Excel is going to be particularly useful because these are going to give you more precise values than table A3 can provide. So in this case, I'm going to use T inverse again. Now, by using this function, remember what they're asking. This is a left tail test. Right? Hence, the entire area from the left is going to be in that left tail, that 5%. The whole significance will be in that one tail. So to find this critical value, the cumulative area from the left is 5%. Our degrees freedom is 49, and we can plug that into the Excel document. So my entire area from the left is 5%. The degrees freedom is 49. I hit enter, and I get a critical value of negative 1.67655. And that's nice. You can see it in the slide here as well. Now, suppose we want to perform a right tail test with a sample size of 50 and a level significance of 5%. Now, the only thing that's going to be different about this is if we use Excel, remember, the probability value in Excel has to be the cumulative area from the left. So if we're performing a right tail test, we take the complement of the significance to get a cumulative area from the left of 95%, and degrees freedom will again be 49. So using Excel, if I plug that in here, change this to a 95% and degree, degrees freedom 49, notice my critical value is 1.676551. It's the positive value of a left tail test of the same significance and degrees freedom. That's because the normal distribution is still s s symmetric. So those areas of 5% and 5% are going to give you really critical values that are just opposites of each other. In other words, one will be positive, one will be negative. So let's move on. Suppose now we're interested in performing a two-tailed test with a sample of 50 and a significance of 5%. Now, in this case, when I ask you for the critical value, notice I'm asking for the critical value of alpha over 2. That's because with a two-tailed test, that level of significance will be shared equally between the two alternative tails for our test. Half of that significance, half of that 5% will be on the right tail, and half of that significance will be on the left tail. So if I want to find now these two critical values, remember, because these two areas of these two tails are equal, then really these two critical values are just going to be opposites of each other. One will be positive, the other one will be negative. So really, we could just find one critical value and then the other one will just be, you know, the opposite of it. Or what we could use in Excel, this t dot inverse dot 2t, which means when we enter the probability, which would be the whole level of significance, the whole 5%, it will understand that there are in fact two critical values and that we have to separate that level of significance by half. We input the degrees freedom of 49, and what it'll do is it'll give you that positive critical value. Therefore, the other critical value then would be the negative. Let's see. So inside Excel, I type in 
t dot inverse. I select the two tail inverse function and type in the level of significance, when, which in this case, the total significance is 5%. Degrees freedom is 49. I hit enter and I get a critical value of 2.009575. Hmm. Now, we could verify this, right? Because we could have calculated this critical value using just the plain t dot inverse function. If I wanted to find just the area relative to the right tail for this two-tailed test, then what I could do is, if I wanted to find the critical value for this right tail, the cumulative area to the left of that would be the complement of that 2.5%, which would be 97.5%. So if I typed in 97.5%, 0.975, and degrees freedom 49, I better get the same value. And I do, 2.009575. Therefore, the other critical value will just be the negative of that. And that's how you use Excel to find those critical values using the t-distribution.